हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल चॉक एंड टॉक एंड ऑलमोस्ट इन द सीरीज ऑफ द न्यूरो एनेटमी वी मूव टूअर्ड द ब्रेन स्टेम एंड वी ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीटेड ऑल द सेक्शंस एंड व्हाट चेंज इन अकरिंग वेयर and that sections was helping us what tract are going where where it's ending another tract is starting and so on okay uh now a very important session about what is the clinical presentation if the lesion occurred at a different level of the brain stem uh, a very short uh, uh, remembrance of that that what was happening on different level the lowest uh, there was the uh, the motor decussion level in the medulla sensory decussion of the medulla olivary decussion of the medulla was there the uh, the pons level the po um, the pons the uh, cranial level and caudal level both and the midbrain the superior colliculus or inferior colliculus level of midbrain was there before moving toward the different presentation and causes of or the lesion of the different level of the brain stem how will they present how will locate where the lesion is present and what is its presentation i want to uh, go on few important basic as we know uh, initial in initial few videos i say that the, the the this neural tube is developing as lr and basal lamina and they are developing ventral and dorsally so most of the part of the ventral aspect whether the spinal cord or the brain stem concerned with the motor tracts or motor areas if i want to draw a i want to draw pyramid this is the pyramidal tract you know the pyramidal tract which is having cortico spinal cortico bulbar and the cortico pontine fibers here at the lower medulla level pontine are not there and if a few pontine are coming that will go in another tract we discuss there this in medulla okay but this is the medullary tract pyramidal tract basically concerned with the cortical spinal cortical nuclear fibers and above this in a right man there is the medial lamiscus as well as the medial longitudinal fascicular medial lamiscus basically here it is medial lamiscus is a sensory tract arrangement of the sensory tract and i'm not uh, I'm drawing a different level i'm and drawing a composite picture of all three level and so there is the medial lamiscus the medial lamiscus but again in the pons the ventral aspect concerned with the cortico spinal cortico nuclear and the cortico pontine especially few cell bodies are left and these are known as and another are starting is known as nuclei pontis nuclei pontis okay you know that but these are few only other are the cortico spinal cortico bulbar tract similarly the ventral aspect of this the mid brain the ventral aspect of the mid brain is separated by the substantia nigra substantia nigra and this part the ventral part is known as crux cerebri and the crux cerebri lateral one six the middle two third and the medial one six the medial one six the middle two third and this is one six and this belongs to the cortico cortico spinal as well as cortico nuclear fiber cortico nuclear fiber cortico spinal cortico nuclear fiber or the medial one is frontopontine and temporopontine laterally that is again the motor fiber the 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 conclusion is that the ventral aspect concerned with the motor activity which govern the lower half of the body not the upper heart of face or neck because that concerned with the seventh nerve but below the neck below the face and neck this uh, the face this lower half of the body is controlled by this one pyramidal system that is carrying cortico spinal that is a rough statement okay roughly this one and this pink color showing the medial lamiscus the medial lamiscus that concerned with the proper reception proper reception now coming toward the few peduncle the posterior lateral aspect concerning with the peduncles this is a inferior cerebral peduncle the inferior inferior cerebellar peduncle in short i c p in pseudo peduncle if i am drawing this one 
the middle cerebral peduncle this is the middle cerebral peduncle this is the middle cerebellar peduncle and even you can see a, a glimpse of the inferior cerebral peduncle also inferior cerebral peduncle in the bones okay in the bones some here in this uh, the tactum part that the superior calculus okay this one you know mtsl mtsl and especially one presentation that is the red nucleus somewhere is the red nucleus this is the red nucleus and concerning the medial longitude the medial lamiscus the medial lamiscus rest are not drawing because you know the lateral lamiscus lapses on the lower part just this one for the i my concern not only that now if i am moving toward the dorsal aspect some of the sensory nucleus are there if i am in here that is spinal spinal lamiscus here it is spinal lamiscus and that is carrying the pain and temperature from the lower half of the body i am not talking about the face because the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve carrying the pain and temperature from the part of lobe so, so i am not drawing the the spinal lamiscus is there and you know after m this is m for the trigeminal then spinal this one also present here i am not drawing this one okay now if i am talking about the trigeminal the nucleus which is starting on this point there is a trigeminal nucleus with the track trigeminal nucleus okay here it is again the trigeminal nucleus is lying here a nucleus first time crossed if the ventral aspect is crossed that is forming the t part trigeminal lamiscus here so here is the lower motor fiber the first fibers of the trigeminal ganglion is there okay this is the basic information to start our brain stem journey so uh, if you can memorize uh, only two point that will be also helpful number one the motor part is concerning with the ventral area cortico spinal cortico nuclear tract number two what cranial nerve what attached at which level the 9 10th 11th 12th nerve 9 10th 11th 12th nerve concerned with the medulla the 7th and 8th concerned with the junction with the pons and the medulla 7th emerging with the 6th in the pons and 3rd and 4th concerned with the midbrain third and fourth so nerve number third cranial nerve to 12th cranial nerve are attached with the brain stem at the different level okay third and fourth mid brain the fifth sixth and seventh bones seventh and eighth also emerging from ponto cerebellar junction and along with the 9 10th 11th 12th with the this uh, medullary junction okay and if i can see that most of nerve which is emerging as a nucleus suppose this is the hypoglossal nerve nucleus of hypoglossal nerve it is emerging by the side of the medial lamiscus and externally it's also arising between the pyramid and the olivary level we can draw the olivary nucleus somewhere here we can draw the olivary nucleus over here and this represent the olivary nucleus hypoglossal nerve emerge as in between the olivary projection of the medulla and the pyramid even in the cross sections you can read this one inferior cerebral peduncle and one more thing very near to this nucleus ambiguous nucleus ambiguous so this is the nucleus ambiguous this is the trigeminal nucleus which is later on form the trigeminal ventral and dorsal trigeminal tract in the midbrain and this information is i think sufficient to present our different level in the medulla okay first and foremost the anterior part this part this part is supplied by anterior spinal artery artery and this part if this part get damaged i am i am shedding this part which part is going to damage this part is damaged this part is damaged 
this is shading of this part number one the damage is for the pyramidal or cortical tract pyramidal or cortical tract if the lesion on the right side if the lesion on the right side the tract will contralaterally cross and supply the opposite half of the body so that is contralateral hemiplegia i think you should be familiar with the word hemiplegia that means the opposite half of the body paraplegia means two lower limbs damage quadriplegia all four limbs damage and monoplegia means single limb that means hemiplegia one side of the upper limb and lower limb are going to affected due to this one and contralateral indicate the opposite to the lesion if lesion in the right side of the medulla if the lesion on the right side of medulla left upper limb and left lower limb are going to suffer this is the first presentation due to the damage of this pyramidal tract okay not only that you can see the hypoglossal nerve is also damaged but hypoglossal nerve lower motor neuron upper motor neuron are those one which was relaying from the cortex to that nucleus okay if the hypoglossal nerve lower motor neuron are damaged ipsilateral tongue suppose there is two half of the tongue uh, this half and midline seeming is there if the lesion on the right side the right tongue is right tongue is paralyzed if we ask patient to protrude the tongue only the left half will protrude and the tip of the tongue will indicate the lesion in the right side that means the tip of the tongue the tip of the tongue indicate the side of the lesion the side of the lesion okay now this will cause the ipsilateral the ipsilateral tongue palsy and that kind of presentation and that kind of presentation where the ipsilateral tongue palsy and contralateral side of the body paralysis is there that is known as contralateral hemiplegia contralateral hemiplegia and this is associated with the cranial nerve number 12 so this will be known as contralateral hypoglossal hemiplegia okay why this is indicated by the hypoglossal because that is indicating level level of the brain stem where the hypoglossal nerve is emerging that damaging if it is happening here somewhere here in the pons the seventh nerve the contralateral abducens hemiplegia will be there will be there but that is not there so that is known as contralateral hypoglossal hemiplegia and that term is also known as anterior spinal artery syndrome and that is also known as medial medullary syndrome the medial medullary syndrome all three word are same the medial medullary syndrome why three name the medial medullary syndrome the anterior spinal artery syndrome and alternating alternating hypoglossal hemiplegia are the similar word and due to the damage of the due to the lesion of the anterior spinal artery now if one important artery which is lying somewhere here posteriorly and it is on the lower leg of the medulla present supplying this zone and it get damage so this is posterior posterior inferior inferior cerebellar cerebellar artery and short p i c a pica syndrome there is damage to this one this is known as pica syndrome and what is going to damage i am again and circling by the purple color this is the part which is going to damage this is the part which is going to damage okay and this pica syndrome first and foremost presentation due to the spinal lemniscus and due to the spinal lemniscus contralateral contralateral loss of pain and temperature of body pain and temperature of body of body contralateral in the in the ventral side that was the paralysis but this time due to the spinal lemniscus contralateral side of body the pain and temperature sensation is gone due to this trigeminal nucleus 
सेम साइड ऑफ द दिस फेशियल द फेशियल सेंसेशन इज गॉन सेम साइड फेशियल सेंसेशन गॉन कॉन्ट्रोलेटल साइड ऑफ द बॉडी सेंसेशन और पेन टेम्परेचर सेंसेशन गॉन एंड दैट टर्म इज नोन एज अल्टरनेटिंग हेमी एनेस्थीशिया दिस इज नोन एज अल्टरनेटिंग अल्टरनेटिंग हेमी एनेस्थीशिया हेमी anesthesia okay am anesthesia along with this the one more important thing is nucleus ambiguous is going to affect and this nucleus ambiguous effect can lead to the damage to the pharynx paralysis of pharynx and soft palate also so these three things the alternating hemiesthesia that means loss of the sensation from the opposite half of the body same side of the face along with the soft palate pharynx paralysis with if it is going to affect the inferior cerebral peduncle that is the peduncle which concerned with the cerebellum that will cause the loss of the balancing that will cause the dystidiokinesia etc if this this may be involved the inferior cerebellar peduncle may be involved four presentation okay four presentation generally four presentation i am talking number one spinal meniscus loss of the pain and temperature of the upper body trigeminal nucleus loss of the pain the, the perception from the same side of face that is contralateral hemiesthesia along with the the, the the paralysis of the soft palate uh, due to the nucleus ambiguous plus additionally if the icp or inferior cerebral peduncle which is connecting medulla to the cerebellum is going to affect the efferent from the cerebellum is also going to affect and that will not lead to the dystidiokinesia etc whatever you read in the book of the medicine the sign and symptom of the cerebellum that will be present and this is known as lateral medullary syndrome that is also known as wallenberg syndrome that is known as wallenberg syndrome wallenberg syndrome pica syndrome posterior inferior cerebral artery syndrome the wallenberg syndrome the contralateral hemianesthesia not the hemiplegia the contralateral hemianesthesia these and lateral medullary syndrome these are synonymous word whatever they ask you to draw a diagram and say anatomical presentation about this one are similar wallenberg syndrome due to the posterior inferior cerebral artery also known as pica syndrome lateral medullary syndrome or contralateral hemianesthesia is almost synonymous with each other so we talk about the medial medullary syndrome we talk about the lateral medullary syndrome now very very important now coming toward the ponto cerebellar junction now coming toward the ponto cerebellar junction yet we are drawing this in a pons the trigeminal lamistus is here okay i am drawing on one side this one this is inferior cerebral peduncle and this is the middle cerebral peduncle very near to this there is the trigeminal nucleus the spinal nucleus the spinal nucleus okay these all are lying here one more thing we i want to uh, memorize you in a gross even and gross the pons and medulla where the junction is present the emerging nerves are seventh and eighth nerve seventh nerve the name eighth nerve and the, there is a junction of the middle and the inferior cerebral peduncle so it's a narrow zone sometimes a mostly a tumor of the nerve sheath of these nerve or other tumor which can be arise from here can lead to compression of this peduncle this area okay i'm supposing this one and if this going to damage this is going to damage what will going to happen number 1 is spinal lamiscus will cause the contralateral pain and temperature loss number 1 number 2 trigeminal nucleus similar to lateral medullary syndrome the spinal the trigeminal nucleus the same side face loss of sensation with the icp the cerebellar presentation like the dystidiokinesia like the uh, the imbalancing and so on plus additionally the seventh nerve and eighth nerve since especially the eighth nerve because most of the time tumor is arising from this nerve okay and what will be this tinnitus 
the progressive tinnitus loss of hearing that is a sensory loss of hearing along with the seventh nerve presentation you know seventh nerve presentation is progressive facial nerve palsy along with the loss of taste sensation and all the field of distribution of seventh nerve is going to affect and this type of syndrome is known as ponto medullary junction syndrome okay ponto medullary junction i can remember nerve number 7 nerve number 8 due to the schwann sheet or nerve cell of the the tumor of this cell seventh is going to affect eight is going to affect along with this lateral medullary like nucleus and this inferior cerebral parenchyma too okay this is the presentation that is known as the ponto medullary junction syndrome and that is a very very important short note again like the lateral medullary syndrome the medial medullary syndrome the ponto cerebro medullary junction syndrome is there and i draw this one is spinal meniscus is just like the lateral medullary syndrome exception is the seventh and eighth nerve is going to affect along with this inferior cerebral parenchyma this is ponto cerebro sorry ponto medullary junction syndrome now a very very important we saw in the pons in a midline there is a six now nucleus of six now and very near to this one there is a seventh nerve and the seventh nerve is running like this more laterally present and sixth nerve is emerging like this this is the seventh nerve and this is the sixth nerve we know the phenomena of the neurobiotaxis you know the phenomena of the neurobiotaxis and if the pontine branch of the basilar artery get damaged the affected area will be this one the affected area will be shown by the purple color and i have shaded them and if only and only this zone is going to affect this zone is affected so the sixth nerve is damaged along with the cortico spinal tract that means the opposite half of the body is affected along with the sixth nerve along with the sixth nerve and what will the presentation of sixth nerve the lateral rectus the lateral rectus will be paralyzed the inversion of eye ball will be there the eye will not diverge on outside clear sixth nerve along with the cortico spinal damage that is the opposite half of the body is damaged okay and this will be known as remond syndrome remond syndrome and due to the basilar artery syndrome if along with this one seventh nerve is going to damage seventh nerve with the cortico spinal tract you can't say what is the area where it is going to damage okay if very very near to this one the seventh is also there and seventh is also engaged with the cortico spinal tract the same side seventh nerve is gone and you know seventh nerve seventh nerve is distributed as the the branchiomotor supplying the facial muscle same side of facial muscle are gone because this is the new lower motor type of palsy of the facial nerve a uh, test sensation from the anterior to third is gone and different presentation of the facial nerve will be there the seventh nerve seventh nerve with the cortico spinal tract is gone that will be known as millard gubler syndrome in the same in the same diagram we can show you cerebral pontine angle damage which is almost lateral medial similar to lateral medial syndrome additionally seventh and eighth nerve is gone we can show you the anterior the pontine artery from the basilar artery if they are going to damage if the six with the cortico spinal tract is damaged that is known as remond syndrome if the the seventh nerve is engaged that is known as middle gubler syndrome and now coming toward the mid brain okay mid brain so medulla concerning with the lateral medullary syndrome the medial medullary syndrome which having other name also the the pons or cerebral pontine junction the cerebral pontine or medullary junction cerebral ponto medullary junction syndrome the remond syndrome and the middle gubler syndrome is uh, now i am coming toward this mid brain and the mid brain is going to affect whether this is affect of the crux cerebri suppose the third nerve complex in the cerebral aqueduct is there and only third nerve which is passing through the red nucleus passes through the red nucleus and the medial aspect this is the third nerve 
you know the fourth nerve is going on the dorsum and i'm not drawing this one i'm not drawing this one okay if third nerve is there and damage to the this zone blue line i'm showing the damage i'm just showing the damage this is the damage the first one is the third nerve palsy and third nerve palsy number one it will cause the paralysis of the levator palpebrae superioris ptosis the pupillary relaxation the pupillary contraction will be lost due to the parasympathetic adenger westphal nucleus that will be the dilation pupillary dilation and along with the loss of the extracular muscle except the eyeball will be on the outer side due to the unparalyzed lateral lecter section third nerve palsy along with opposite half of the cortico spinal and cortico bulbar which was always present in the ventral aspect syndrome and if these three presentation are there the oculomotor with the opposite half of the body damage this will be known as weber syndrome okay the weber syndrome what is weber syndrome actually weber syndrome is contralateral oculomotor hemiplegia the contralateral hypoglossal hemiplegia was the term which was used for the ventral side of the medulla the here is the term contralateral oculomotor hemiplegia what this term indicate contralateral means opposite half the body same side of third nerve and if this third nerve that indicating the mid brain that is happening in the mid brain so mid brain syndrome that belongs to the ventral aspect of the mid brain that causing the damage to the oculomotor nerve and different presentation as a ptosis the pupillary constriction along with the damage to the cortico spinal tract on the other side that will lead to the weber syndrome weber syndrome okay uh, now i'm coming toward the tegmental syndrome the tegmental syndrome suppose this zone is gone this is a part of the tegment we know na the above this the the tectum is there and here is the tegmentum is there and this was the crux the weber syndrome basically concerned with the crux part where the third nerve emerging in this one now coming toward the tegment syndrome in this tegment syndrome we can see the third nerve palsy and the presentation of the third nerve palsy will be the same the eyeball will be diverted toward the lateral side because an opposed action of lateral rectus which is supplied by the six okay the pupillary dilation because pupillary constriction is lost due to the adenger westphal nucleus the ptosis is present because the the paralysis of the levator palpebrae superioris okay that part is known same oculomotor palsy is almost similar but additionally there is lapsing of the medial lamiscus opposite half of the body is hemi anesthetized due to this medial lamiscus along with the red nucleus this red nucleus is efferent or this is a messenger from the cerebellum to the spinal cord especially the descending fiber and this will cause the chorea acetosis chorea acetosis like presentation tremors chorea anesthetosis which is a classical presentation of degeneration of the cerebellum so if the efferent of the cerebellum red nucleus is gone the chorea acetosis and tremor will present chorea acetosis tremor logos with the oculomotor along with the loss of anesthesia of the other half due to this medial lamiscus that will be known as benedict benedict syndrome syndrome easy to learn weber syndrome in the crux part and that is the oculomotor palsy with the contralateral cortico spinal cortico pyramidal tract the tegmental part the benedict syndrome where the oculomotor is again paralyzed but this time with the red nucleus chorea athetosis chorea athetosis and the the tremors is present along with the loss of the sensation of other half now a very mysterious syndrome where the tectum is gone and why the tectum is gone because sometime a pineal gland tumor can enlarge and compress this one so this is gone this is gone this is gone and there is a single presentation that is upper gaze deformity of eyeball and uh, is still this is mysterious why it is happening but there this is known as paranoid syndrome that is known as paranoid 
syndrome. So these are different. Uh, they, these are different presentation. And uh, here one more presentation. Pinpoint pupil, the hemorrhage, the pontine hemorrhage also a one presentation. But I am going again in this one. The in very short. We have to remember what cranial nerve is damaged. Is the cranial nerve third is damaged, fourth is damaged? Okay, fourth are uh, only damaged when the intracranial tension is raised, so on. If the third is damaged with the corticospinal tract, the level is the midbrain. Third and fourth level is midbrain. Sixth and seventh, basically level and is fifth two. That is level of the pons. If the the ninth, tenth, eleventh is damaged, that is in the medulla. And if this there is a seventh and eighth, that is maybe the pontomedullary junction. And each and every part, whether this is in the ventral part, as should be the corticospinal tract. So this is known as contralateral hemiplasia. Whether this is a contralateral hemiplasia of the hypoglossal nerve, whether the contralateral hemi hemiplasia of the oculomotor nerve, these all lie in the ventral aspect of the brain stem of the different level. Okay. There is a contralateral hemiesthesia, lateral medullary syndrome, and these syndrome having the uh, the many names. As the lateral medullary syndrome is known as Pica syndrome due to its supplying artery, along with the Wellenberg syndrome, or is this due to its presentation is known as contralateral hemiesthesia. Similarly, the medial medullary syndrome is also known as anterior spinal artery syndrome due to supplying artery, also known as contralateral hypoglossal hemiplasia due to the paralysis of the different part of body or opposite part, same side of face, or uh, same side of the tongue, and opposite of the body. Okay, these are different name to these two syndromes. When we are talking about the the pontomedullary junction, that is a congested angle due to the two convergent cerebral peduncle along with the seventh eighth nerve. Okay, so this can be damaged by very small tumor, and this can compress all the structures. Lateral medullary syndrome like presentation along with the along with the 7th and 8th nerve presentation that is a pontomedullary junction okay and in the uh, the the same in the pons level if the ventral part is affected the 6th nerve 6th nerve is damaged with the corticospinal tract and that's again we can name it contralateral hemiplasia abducent hemiplasia that is remand syndrome that is remand syndrome if 7th nerve is going to affect or contralateral hemiplasia of seventh nerve that is known as millard gubler syndrome next is the midbrain if the part is damaged is the crux cerebri the oculomotor nerve presentation ptosis pupillary dilation along with the all extracular muscle nerve except the lateral and superior oblique with the contralateral corticospinal tract that is contralateral third nerve or oculomotor hemiplasia Weber syndrome. If it is happening into the tegmentum part, the oculomotor nerve is damaged. But red nucleus presentation, that is the efferent of the cerebellum, and the presentation will be the tremor, the 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 tremor, the chorea and atherosclerosis, etc. Along with the loss of sensation of the opposite half, that is medial hemiscus. That is known as Benedict syndrome and due to the compression of the pineal gland, upper gaze deformity that is known as paranoid syndrome. These are few syndrome which is associated and there is a clear cut anatomical basis except the paranoid syndrome of all. Not only that, lastly, if the all nerve, you can say that, okay sir, sometimes the, all the nerve can be affected, okay, third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve, or clinical nerve affected. The first is extensional cerebellum. Second is op the, the, the first one is the olfactory second optic nerve. That is extension which is going to cerebellum. Third to onwards nerve damage. All nerve check in and all are damaged. Okay. Then the brain stem death is there. And if the brain stem death is there or brain death is there, you can announce that person is dead now. Okay. That is the uh, last chapter of the life. Uh, okay, the, these are the syndrome. These are frequently asked syndrome as a short note in the different examination. Not only that, this is also clinically relevant when you are examining a patient of the uh, in a neurology unit, and you can you want to assess without MRI or CT scan. You want to assess that what is the level of the lesion in the brain stem. So these are very very important short note as well as the questions in the examination because these are clinically relevant and you have to understand the anatomical basis when they are saying anatomical basis you have to write why this happening and due to which nucleus 
don't don't only note what is the symptomatic presentation you have to correlate it with the tract and the nucleus okay when there is a question is asked what is the anatomical basis you have to clearly defining that due to what tract what kind of presentation is there with these few thoughts uh, that's end of the brain stem and we will we'll move toward upper part of the brain as the thalamus internal capsule basal ganglia and onwards now that is all about the brain stem if you want to ask a question you can write in inbox uh, your question will be welcome thank you thanks a lot